Very good. Okay, I will call the uh, subcommittee ordinance committee of the board of selectmen to order. It is Thursday, April 7th. It is shortly after 6 PM. And we have as our 1st order of business, we're going to take a look at anti littering ordinances and we have with us tonight police chief Frank Capiello. So welcome. Chief Capiello, um, we wanted to get your take on the current situation and. We are aware that there is a state law that prohibits littering, obviously, and there's, uh, you know, there are some other towns that have their own law on top of that in ordinance. And that's been suggested to us that we should look at that, but we want to get your take 1st to see how you feel about the existing state law and whether you see a need for anything up and above that. Okay, um, yeah, thanks for having me and including me in uh, tonight's discussion. Um, so, as you said, there is the current state statute in place. It's um, Connecticut General, General Statute 22A250, which um, specifically um, targets littering uh, and illegal dumping. And that's the statute, it's, you know, it's, it's been modified, but it's a statute um, that's been in place for years. And um, it's the statute that we've used on occasion when, you know, when we had to take enforcement action. Um, but I guess I could start by saying that we haven't had, we don't have an exorbitant number of littering um, complaints that we officially receive at the police department. I look back, you know, so far in this year, um, you know, in the first three months, we've, we only actually had one and it was really just a, a piece of mail. And I think um, from, it was from another town and I think after they got in touch with the people, they didn't even know they were missing the mail. So it might've been part of some stolen mail. Um, mm -hmm. So that that case, but but um, regardless of the fact that of us being notified, you know, I, I do understand uh, the residents' concern, um, residents' concerns, ongoing concerns of people littering and you know and, and um, being considerate of others in that regard. And over the years, once in a while, we have um, had cases of some illegal dumping, you know, of maybe some furniture or, or brush or demolition uh, here and there. And we address those as as they as they come in. Um, but as far as the need for a specific ordinance, I mean I, I from our from my standpoint, I, I don't see um what effect that would really have because there is the mechanism was already in place for us to take action and to address it. Um, and another having another option to that only to me, it would complicate the matter. Then you have two different, you know, um, two different ways to proceed. And then, how do you make a just decision of, you know, do you want to charge it for the town ordinance? Do you want to charge it for the state statute? So if you yeah. just leave it for one, you know, it's a mail and fine. Um, either way, it's a mail and fine. So you know, as I said, it's it's already there. As far as enforcement goes, for us, you know, if we saw something, you know, blatant, and you know, we could take action as an on-site violation. Most of the time, you know, people aren't going to throw something, discard something right in the presence of a police officer. So um, most of the stuff we get is after the fact, um, you know, mm -hmm. unless a witness called it in or somebody sees some suspicious activity or suspicious vehicle or truck. Um, but a lot of it's after the fact. And, and a lot of it, um, you know, is unidentifiable things that are discarded, you know, at night on a vacant property or in a vacant parcel of land or uh, where there's no traffic and it's just stuff that can't be tracked. But on occasion there is, you know, there are, you know, a bag of something or whatever, and, and you would be able to, you know, uh, find the owner in that and, and, and take action and, and, and address it either with a fine or having it removed. But, but that's how we, you know, we have been proceeding with that. Okay, so um, one of the other things we talked a little bit about is um, kind of a public information campaign that would help make people aware that obviously there are laws against littering or dumping. And if we were to kind of publicize them a little bit and then maybe couple that with a beautification campaign, we've we've talked about the the annual rid litter day, but you know, neighbors can get together and, and do that sort of trash removal. And I wondered if um, if there's any element of uh, public information campaign that you think that your officers could be part of, or you could you know put it out on your notices and things like that. Yeah, we, we, we'd be uh, more than happy. I mean, I think that's really a good idea to start 
first with promoting awareness and bringing that to the forefront of the community and let them know if you know people are complaining, people are concerned, and um, together everybody have that sense of community spirit and try to resolve it that way. But the police department would be happy to, um, you know, post things, something, uh, you know, on our social media um, or come out with a press release. Um, anything we can do to help or if there's you know, maybe an event, um, maybe we could volunteer on during Riddler, Riddler Day or Earth Day or, or one of the, one of the com town, uh, town-wide community events. But that's probably the best way, I, I would think, to, to at least initiate the uh, resolve. Yeah, and Frank, is it also the case that if if there are going to be rid litter um, or or you know community group? I think there was a group of Amity students at one point that went up Amity Road. Is it possible to get one of the officers to sort of trail in a car to make sure that that they're safe on the side of the road while they're doing cleanup activity? Yes, absolutely. You're and you're right. We did we did um, partner up with the high school when they did that not too long ago, probably probably last spring maybe. And um and it was on Amity Road and they asked and you know we devoted somebody to that to keep uh, everyone safe and to work together. So and, and that really worked out well. They had a they had a good group of I think it got changed once because of the weather or something came up, but uh, <laughs> we accommodated them and um and it was a good event. So yeah. Yeah, it draws even more attention too, because then people can say what was going on and they'll look on the Facebook or whatever and see, oh, police are supporting this effort. So yeah. Um, did we have other uh, members of the committee? Do we have other questions for Frank? No, I'm sorry. I have was having trouble getting in. I don't know where my link went, but thank you for sending it or having it sent. Uh, uh, it, it, and you probably already covered this, Frank. But I, I, the only question I really had was: is do we have a lot of litter infractions that get? Handed out on a on a yearly basis. I mean, what's is this is this something that you can even police? You indicated that usually you don't people don't get in front of a police car and throw a bunch of stuff out. Right. Yeah, and and you know I really don't think we've had anywhere we have seen an on site violation and had to take action. I'm sure if they did, they probably stopped and warned the person, or if, if they did see it. But they have to be very few and. Uh, you know, far between, um, and I don't know if you were on at the beginning, but so far this year, we only had just that one incident this year. Um, and I look back and, you know, in 2020, we had 15, you know, there's uh, 15 calls logged, but they could be anything just from, uh, you know, sometimes there's a neighbor dispute over who's putting brush on whose property and where the property line is and like that. But as far as, um, you know, significant uh, dumping cases, you know, over the years, we've had a couple or, you know, or a minimal amount, I should say. And, um, you know, if we could take action, we have, but um, other than that, it hasn't really been a big problem or a big problem reported to the police. You know, it might be going about the community or, you know, amongst people, but not to the point where it's ever brought to the, been brought to our attention, not that often. Um, I think one of the things we went over at the last meeting was the idea that if we had an additional ordinance, we could set a slightly higher fine. Uh, but we had some discussion here that we're, we're not we're not necessarily in favor of creating laws so that we can collect fines. That that wouldn't be the a rationale for creating a law if we already have a law that you're able to enforce. Um, Bringing in money is revenue is not what we're after here. We're, what we're after is trying to, you know, uh, persuade people to stop the behavior that we're trying to stop. Is that more the case, Frank? Yes, I I, I think so. And I, I believe the fine, the um, the state statute fine is um, uh, one hundred ninety nine dollars or thereabouts. So, I mean, I couldn't imagine making a town fine that would be greater than that. You know, but um. You know, like you said, it's not really about the the revenue end of it. It's about stopping the behavior and curtailing the behavior. Yeah. Okay. Do we have any other questions for Chief before we let him go? No, thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you all. Nice thank to see you. Thank you everyone. for joining us. Okay. Have a nice evening. Terrific. Okay, so the next item on our agenda was the public comment that we did receive. Um, and this is from Edward 
Anatone, who lives on Northrop Road and had, I, I take it, Jerry, that he had called in to speak with you about this? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, let's say he called in to speak with me. Okay, and, and so his statement, and I'll just read it into the record because it's quite brief. Every week he picks up discarded bottles, wrappers, broken glass, et cetera, from his front lawn to fill a trash bag. Um, he's offered to bring that in to prove his point. Uh, he recommends once a month pickup brigade, especially for busy through streets like Northrop Road, um, with a police escort to keep participants safe from traffic, which is similar to what we talked about has already taken place on Amity Road, I think last year, maybe the year before. Um, so that was his comment. He he just wanted to uh, let us know. I, I, I take it that he watched our meeting and has has heard the concern and wanted to let us know that Northrop Road does see some trash. I think the main roads in town much more likely to have trash than the various cul-de-sacs out there. Um, so that's good to hear. Good comment there. Um, Jerry, is there anyone else who is trying to attend the meeting to give us public comment? No, there's no one else showing as an attendee. Okay, so our next item on our agenda is to discuss what we would recommend to the Board of Selectmen for this anti-littering. So um, I think what I'd like us to recommend, and you can all chime in to see if this you know, fits what you're thinking as well, is that we begin with a public information campaign and and see how that proceeds. So if we can ask um, some staff to get information out in newsletters, um, maybe even something like, did you know there's a law against littering, there's a $199 fine, but most importantly, we wanna keep Woodbridge beautiful. Everyone, you know, please remember and also pick up, uh, you know, when you see litter pick up in your neighborhood on your own property or join a team to keep a neighborhood clean. I think we can kind of leave it to staff to come up with how we might have a campaign like that. Does that sound like a first step that we could recommend? Yes. <laughs> okay, because I think we're hearing that that we don't necessarily need another law. We need to make more awareness of the law we have and then um, see if we can, you know, increase compliance in that in that manner. So, all right. So, if we're in agreement about that, we can report back to the board of selectmen. I don't think we need any kind of vote to do that. Um, we'll just make that recommendation. Okay. Um, and then, so I don't, I don't know the uh, stiffer fines and you know, doubling down on if it's already an ordinance or it's already on the statutes. No, we really mean it. I, you know, it just doesn't sound like that's that's going to get any real action. It's it's only exaggerating the punitive aspect rather than the behavioral. So we yeah. should <clears throat> I I I think awareness is a better idea and and certainly uh getting people I mean, it mean it it worked in the '60s. It should work again. You know, yeah. uh, campaigns are are very good on that score, and I've participated in a number of cleanup efforts, and I think that they are great. I think that they do work. I think it it not only gets them cl things cleaner, but it it gets a whole another generation of people understanding the issue. So, I would I would prefer that over uh, doubling down. Yeah. All right, so I think, um, Jerry, if you're, you're gonna create some minutes for this meeting and, and that will have some details of what uh, uh, Chief Capiello told us about his view on that. So so we will bring that back to the Board of Selectmen and you know, we'll engage in some more discussion there. And I think it fits with the Beautify Woodbridge theme that we have going on as mm -hmm. it is. So this, this might be very handy. Uh, Shiota, do you want this to come to the Board of Selectmen in May at their May meeting? Um, or do you want me to try to put something together? Because the packet goes out tomorrow and the agenda gets filed tomorrow. Yeah, let's put an of ordinance course. update. And then if the minutes are ready, you know, in time for mm -hmm. the meeting, Jerry, that would be great. Um, I don't okay. want to rush the minutes because I know it takes some time. But let, we'll at least put the, the update in there. Okay. 
well we're requested anyway because we have to mm. send that to Beth and request that it be on the agenda. yeah yeah okay okay and then the um we have two more items on our agenda so uh, beginning a discussion on the review of the ordinances that establish the appointed boards and commissions so i did take a look through the packet and i noticed two things um there are only a handful of boards and commissions that have specific requirements in their own little piece of ordinance about how often they meet. All the rest of them seem to defer to a paragraph at the top of that section that says um, at least six times per year. Right. That's every other month or thereabouts. So that was interesting. I've never thought of that uh, concept. Yeah, it actually, it actually said at uh, six, at least six times a year, unless otherwise specified in in the uh, ordinance that form form them, which would mean either more or fewer meetings. I, yes. I I just was thinking I was looking for that on the ethics committee, and I was wondering, mm -hmm. do you really need to have a regular meeting of the ethics committee? I always thought ethics was uh, they met as needed when something. Yes. Was Heard. Yeah, correct. That's not in the it audience, though, so, Jerry. Yeah, it, it's just um, sort of yeah. tradition, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's interesting. So I think um, that was one thing, and then I noticed that the investment committee, which is a subcommittee of the board of selectmen, uh, says at least semi-annually. Yeah. yeah. So Twice just two times per year, and which I thought was quarterly, but I I'm. I'm, I'm wrong about that too so i'm learning little things here by reading our ordinances um uh, you know at least could, it could mean whatever it means but i don't i don't know that uh i too was focused a little bit on on exactly that because it yeah it did seem like the more meetings you have where people just say well we don't have anything to talk about that's that's not really productive uh yeah and there is a, I, I think there is a difficulty, and I know we're we're going to go back to the full board of selectmen and talk a little bit to our fellow members in their liaison roles, asking them to check in with the boards and commissions that they cover. But I, I know there has been times when it's difficult to get a quorum of people together. I know Coopop is has um, struggled with this a few times, and if um, and I think the that's GATB. Yeah, that's the other one. Um, so, if it's possible to set, I know they've set a regular meeting schedule already for the year, but I think it can be amended at any point in the year as well. We'll check with the town clerk on that. But if we we were to explore every other month meetings that took place every other month so that the regular schedule was um, half as many meetings for the year. I think that that's, we should ask what boards and commissions think of this, because if we were to do that, theoretically, we're cutting in half the, the sort of staff coverage that would have to take place. Um, and if they can get their work done in that kind of schedule, then this might be a productive thing to do. Of course, if they can't get their work done, unless they're meeting monthly, uh, that's a different situation. So I think we'll have to ask. Right. Well, it does seem that the assumption is out there that they are supposed to meet monthly. Yeah. And there, you, if we just said that the ordinance says the expectation is six times a year, unless otherwise, uh, otherwise prescribed, that maybe some commissions would just by telling them that's what it is. I mean, I don't. I don't know whether the commissions are actually told that information when they are formed. Yeah, so yeah. I think that's that's a good point. Yeah. All right, so let's begin our sort of outreach to boards and commissions by talking first at the Board of Selectmen, make sure that this is something that, that everybody thinks we should be exploring. Um, I think we also thought, and maybe this crosses into the strategic planning committee, which is going to have a meeting tomorrow. Um, the idea of getting a little bit of data behind this to say, what, what exactly does it cost to have this amount of government, which is this amount of boards and commissions meeting on this kind of basis? And what might it look like if we were to make some changes? Um, it may be a significant amount of money. It may not be. 
but we, we should probably collect some data as well to help with our decision making. Um, My guess is it's not going to be a significant amount of money since we're not, since all of the commissions are volunteer in terms of the attendance and yeah, it's just the minutes. I think obviously it's that. more of a, it's more time consuming. I think the opportunity cost may be greater than the actual savings. If, if we're taking people who are employed at town hall, mm. a way to do minutes when there are more productive things that they could be doing. Uh, I, I'm not sure what those could be would be, but that right. that would be a benefit. Uh, yeah, and certainly I, know we... I think why, why wouldn't we want commissions to meet the way that they think they can be most productive and when they most need to meet? I know the library commission will want to meet every month. They always, you know, they they always have things to do. They always have act activities to report on. Mm -hmm. Similarly, with the recreation group, mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, the people who are really very very passionate on their specific and and it's an and you know it's a year long programmatic thing. Mm -hmm. They probably going to want to keep doing it the way they're doing it, but, but. Yeah, ethics, you know, uh, others may, may very well have, uh, yeah. I think if we, if we encourage, a, um, some thoughtful engagement around efficiency, um, because in addition to, you know, a staff person taking minutes, which some of them have, and some of them do not. Um, a lot of times they'll just shift a staff person's hours to later in the day, but sometimes that runs into overtime because they're, it's after their hours. Um, there's more, we can ask Tony Genovese more details on that. But then in addition to that, we've got the work of the government access television to, you know, process those videos and get them posted. Um, we've also got, we heard from the town clerk during our budget uh, time that posting all the minutes and agendas and keeping up to date with them is, is, um, uh, is, is a set of tasks that there's someone available to do it, but they're clearly not doing other things while they're doing this. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the kind of overload that I think you might, you might come. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So let's, we'll do, we'll do some more exploration and, and I think we, for our next meeting, maybe we'll have some more information to maybe invite some people to come to our meeting and talk to us and, um, so that leads us to next meeting. We don't have anything kind of scheduled. So um, I don't know, what are our thoughts about when we would like to meet next? I think uh, our, the rest of April, it seems busy and May through the annual town meeting also seems busy to we've me. We've got a lot of budget and, and town meeting type stuff coming up. Uh, yeah. Maybe, uh, uh, Sheila, maybe in the report to the uh, board, if we can get that on this time, we'll get a little bit more direction and could plan a, the, our future meeting accordingly. That's a good idea because they may have some thoughts for us that we'll need some time to pursue. All right. Well, why don't we hold off then and we will, um, I'll, Jerry Shaw will ask you to poll once we get a better sense of the time frame in which we want to meet. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, fine. And then we'll go from there. All right. Well, if we have nothing else on our agenda, we're going to have a very efficient meeting today. <laughs> and I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. We got a second there, Joe. Yep. Okay. It's non-debatable. So all those my apologies for being in late. It was frustrating, but thanks oh. for the link. Sorry, you had trouble. All right. We'll see you guys soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.